Hello, church family. It's Pastor Schwender and Mrs. Schwender. Uh, we're here for Wednesday night Bible study, and we are uh, kind of in limbo. <laughs> this has been a crazy time uh, in the church's life, of course, in our country's life, and uh, just kind of really just sitting back the last couple of days here and just marveling at our our leaders and the decisions they have to make and uh, just when lockdowns are done and stay at home stuff is done and when we can get back to church and uh, just been in prayer the last few days here and I, I want to talk to you in a few moments about trials um, and, and I know sometimes we talk about trials but I just want to give you maybe a little bit different viewpoint of it uh, from the life of Job here in just a few minutes but we're going to have a, a, a time of prayer here in just a few moments. My wife's going to give us a couple announcements first uh, about the week ahead and just so exciting what uh, Miss Rachel and uh, her team has uh, put together for this coming Sunday. Miss Rachel? Yes, well, as everyone knows, this uh, Sunday is Easter Sunday. And, you know, normally our mm. church does a big production and a cantata or a play or something like that. And I know some of you have been, you know, thinking that, you know, celebrating at home is going to be much different than coming here. So we wanted to put as much normalcy as we could into our Easter program. So we were doing something very unique. I'm kind of keeping it a secret because I don't want everyone to know exactly what is happening until you tune in and watch it um, on Easter morning. But we are having a cantata. The title of the cantata is called The Event. And so it's kind of a mystery surrounding what is this event. Mm -hmm. But I want you at 10.30... Uh, Sunday morning to tune in um, to the Bible Baptist Church Easter Cantata um, called The Event. We'll still be having a children's story hour um, before that, so make sure you still are um, getting your kids ready to watch that. But I think your kids will also enjoy watching the cantata too for those of you who have young ones. There'll be lots of music, there'll be some drama, and so it'll be, um, it, it'll keep their attention. So I believe that's pretty much the only announcement that we have that it seems like a common phrase right now everything is canceled but isn't it um, amazing that god has removed everything from the calendar miss rachel except easter. easter and uh we're excited about easter our family loves easter of course my wife already bought dresses on amazon for easter it's the saddest thing in the world not being able to go to the stores and shop for coordinating outfits so i well, I kinda... we, we are personally helping Jeff Bezos never go bankrupt. Uh, we are putting Amazon, uh, keeping them in business during this time. My wife has been an, on Amazon buying stuff, but uh, they've got all their pretty dresses. My wife's picked me out a shirt, and uh, we're still going to get dressed up on Easter and take some pictures, and uh, I hope that you'll make some memories like that even on this Easter when it's so different and weird uh, that it would be something that is a memory for your family. Um, There'll be time after all this is over, uh, and I just don't want to get done with this time and regret uh, maybe the interaction with my children or interaction with my spouse or interaction with my church family. And uh, thank you for the cards you've been sending, the text you've been sending, uh, a couple phone calls. Uh, it's just been such a blessing uh, to, to have that encouragement as we're trying to keep these live streams going. You don't know who's watching. You don't know uh, how many people are out there uh, staying faithful and, and uh, giving and all those things. And so uh, I'm very thankful uh, when you tune in. I'm very thankful when you send in your offerings. I'm very thankful when you help the church to keep on going as it needs to go during this time. And uh, at this time, uh, why don't we have a, a word of prayer, um, a couple updates on some of the prayer requests that we've had already. Raven texted me this morning, uh, and he is up walking. Uh, he is uh, starting to be able to take care of himself and uh, get out of bed and do those things at the rehab center there. He said, please pray for his hands. He still has no feeling in his hands. They're not working well. Um, and a couple other issues that he's, he's having uh, rebounding from this fall. And so if you'll pray for Raven Winden, his family, uh, we love them so much and uh, just ask you to continue to pray uh, for them. Brother Trout was sick last week. He's better this week. Uh, we have, uh, who else? Um, uh, Alyssa, Alyssa Lear, last week was at Children's Hospital, Latin, not this past Sunday, but the Sunday before, and uh, this past week has been spent doing tests and all kinds of stuff uh, and trying to figure out her health, and so we're continuing to pray for Alyssa. Mom and Dad say there's no um, lasting effect uh, from it, from the stroke that she had, but the doctors certainly want to know why it happened, how it happened, 
Uh, and so they're still continuing to do some tests and, and those kinds of things on Alyssa. Uh, continue to pray for our prime timers to stay healthy. If you'll pray for me to stay healthy, uh, I am one of those folks uh, that are immunosuppressed and uh, it does weigh on my mind a little bit. Uh, I do have to go to therapies and some doctor's appointments and uh, I try not to get out more than that, uh, just trying to stay, stay healthy during this time. I asked Miss Rachel, um, uh, we got several texts that they loved your, your prayer from last week. I don't believe you. <laughs> I'm telling you, they prayed for you, and they, or they uh, they enjoyed your prayer time. And so, because I'm going to be talking for the next few minutes, uh, would you lead us in a word of prayer this evening? Would you bow together with me at home uh, during this time of prayer for our church family, our country, and uh, our, our certainly our friends that are not feeling well at this time? Dear Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you so much for um, the blessings that you've given us, Lord. Um, I thank you for some of the beautiful weather that you've sent our way, some of the exciting weather that you've sent our way, Lord. And um, we just want to thank you, first of all. We never want to be ungrateful and forget the good that's happened in our lives because there's some scary times. And so we, first of all, want to thank you for that. We want to bring the people who are not uh, feeling well, who are in the hospitals or uh, recovering, and um, those who have tests that need to be run. Lord, we bring them all before you, Lord. There's so many in this world right now who are sick and who are, you know, on death's doorstep, and we just want to bring our, our country and our world to you. Lord, I pray that you'll, you'll be with those who are facing hard health issues right now, Lord. I pray that you'll help them physically, but more than ever, Lord, I pray that you'll send someone to each person who's sick. I pray that you'll send someone their way with the truth of the gospel, Lord, because Many are dying right now, and they need you more than anything. And I just pray that you'll, you'll help Christians to figure out a way uh, in this trying time, in this time where we're supposed to stay in our homes, to still reach out and to still spread the gospel to those that we know and love. Lord, I pray for the service today, Lord. I pray that you'll give Pastor the words to say, help him um, to be filled with the Holy Spirit and to speak to us um, exactly what you would have him speak to us. We pray for our church, Lord. I pray that You'll just uh, help the people in our church to stay healthy, Lord. Give us wisdom as far as what to do and when to do it and how to do it, Lord. Um, help us to not do anything out of fear, um, but to have full faith and confidence in you and uh, to make wise decisions. I pray that you'll keep um, financially taking care of our church people so that um, they can give back to you and that the church can be taken care of. Lord, we bring everything um, that we have to you. I pray that you'll be with us today. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Thank you, Miss Rachel. I appreciate that. Uh, we're going to be in Job chapter 40 tonight. Job chapter 40. And uh, thank you for getting your Bible there, whether you use a phone or whether you use your, your Bible there at home. Uh, whatever you're using, make sure you, you see some of these things tonight. Um, I, I've been uh, studying the book of Job the last week. And I started reading the book of Job uh, for me. I, I'm, I'm in the middle of some trials in my own life, in my own health, in my own family. And uh, I just went back to Job and, and, and said, you know, Lord, would you teach me through Job, uh, through the book here, just, just some things that maybe I need to be reminded of uh, in trials. And reading the book of Job is one of the most interesting books you could ever possibly read. Uh, it is... Uh, interesting. It's intriguing. It's uh, it's got mystery in it. It's got uh, correction and chastisement. It's got a battle between God and Satan going on. Uh, so it is a very very exciting book. Sometimes when we get to books like this, we want to uh, maybe sensationalize it, or we want to get some points out of it that maybe aren't even attainable. Um, if you go to Job chapter 1 and verse number 1, it talks about him being a perfect man and one that eschewed evil, was perfect in his generation. And uh, it's, it's amazing uh, if you start in Job chapter 1 and verse 1, you're kind of discouraged after the first verse that you can't face trials the way Job did. Uh, but the truth is, if you'll read the whole book of Job, you'll realize that Job didn't face the trial necessarily the way that God wanted him to do, uh, to face it. And so when you come to, to the, this is the end of the book, and 
uh, Eli, uh, the three friends have talked and Job has responded. And uh, basically, uh, the three friends were saying, there's no other way that this is possible, that this would happen to you unless you did something bad, uh, unless God was judging you. Uh, and they were so wrong. Uh, that's not why God did it. Uh, God did it for, uh, and, and we'll talk about this, but God did it for his own reasons. Uh, it was, the story does not revolve around Job. And I think that's sometimes where we, when we look at the book of Job, we want to revolve around Job and go, oh, Job, what an amazing guy. And he was. He was a, a great man, but he was a man. And the, the rest of the book shows us that the, the book is really about God and our relationship with God. And, uh, and, and so I put down just three quick points tonight. It, it will not be long. Uh, but I, I, as you come to ch chapter 40, it starts with this. It says in chapter 40 and verse number one, it says, moreover, the Lord answered Job. Uh, so <laughs> moreover means God's been talking for a while. And just when Job might think he's done, it says, moreover, the Lord answered Job and said, shall he that contendeth with the Almighty instruct him? He that reproveth God, let him answer it. Then Job answered the Lord and said, now, realize Job has, um, uh, the three friends have talked. Job has responded to them, basically accusing God that uh, God doesn't really care uh, about him and about, about his righteousness and the good things he's done. And now God's coming back at him. And here's what Job says uh, after this big, long speech by God of all the things that God can do uh, and, and what he has control of. He says, Behold, I am vile. What shall I answer thee? I will lay my hand upon my mouth. Once I have spoken, but I will not answer. Yea, twice, but I will proceed no further. So uh, this, the, the book is, almost the entire book, you'll see the word, uh, the name of God, God. Uh, in other places, it's Almighty. Uh, it's uh, His Maker. Um, so a lot of different titles are given to God. It is in chapter 40 where God is seen differently by Job. God is answering, God is answering, God is showing his Elohim side, his powerful side, his creator side. And finally, Job gives in and says, I will, I will hold my tongue. I, I will not say anything else because I obviously have not responded the right way here. And it says, then answered, verse 6, then answered the Lord unto Job out of the whirlwind. He says, gird up thy loins now like a man. I will demand of thee and declare thou unto me. Will thou also disannul my judgment? Wilt thou condemn me that thou mayest be righteous? Hast thou an arm like God? Or canst thou thunder with a voice like him? Deck thyself now with majesty and excellency and array thyself with glory and beauty. Uh, and, and God basically puts it to Job for, for a few verses here, uh, an entire couple chapters. Um, you can pick it up in any verse in chapter 41, uh, verse 13. Who can discover the face of his garment? Or who can come to him with, with his double brow? Who can open the doors of his face? He, and he talks about these powerful creatures that he's created. Who can even stand against those creatures, let alone stand against God? And then chapter 42, the Lord answered Job. The Lord answered Job. Now here's what it says in 42. Then Job answered the Lord. Finally, Job sees the Lord as the Lord sees, uh, as the Lord is trying to get Job to see, not as just the creator God and the powerful God, but the personal God and the caring God. I just put down three quick points, and I want to give these to you in the middle of trials. Uh, whether it's like Job, a health trial, of course, his possessions were taken. I mean, Job had a lot of things going on, but all of us, uh, whatever happens in this situation in our country and with the health and of people and uh, this pandemic that's going on, or whether it's going to be financial trouble in the near future, or whatever the case is, there are certain things in trials that are always true. And I would say, number one, in trials, be careful of your first desire, because your first desire will be to justify or question why. The first instinct that we always have when trials come on us is, what did I do to deserve this? <laughs> what, what have I done that's so bad? And then we begin to compare ourselves with other people and comparing ourselves with ourselves the bible says is unwise and and job uh spends a little bit of time his first response to god when this thing was happening 
Of course, we see his integrity come out in the first couple chapters. Naked came I in the world, naked shall I return, blessed be the name of the Lord. But as, as the trial goes on, his first instinct, his first desire was to justify or, or question God. Why is this happening to me? Uh, and so just be careful of that. Don't stay there too long. <laughs> uh, God does not condemn Job for asking questions. Uh, what God condemned Job for was Job was kind of telling people, I'm righteous. Look at all the good things I have done. I don't know why God's doing this to me. Look at all the good things. I mean, I've cared for the poor. I've clothed people. I've, I've fed people. And, and so he, he begins to justify why he shouldn't be going through this or why, why is this happening to him? And so be careful of that. In, in trials, just understand that your first instinct is going to probably be, you know, I don't deserve this. <laughs> Uh, and then secondly, I put this, in trials, our default needs to be reminding ourselves of who God is. Our default needs to be. Our desire might be, first of all, to justify our question, but our default, and, and if you know anything about phones, I don't know a lot about phones, but every once in a while, my computer or my phone will go haywire, and I'll get a bug on it or a virus or something will happen. I'll take it to Pastor Lear, and sometimes he has to take it back to the default settings. Sometimes you have to get all those justifications and all those whys and all those, uh, I don't deserve this and how could this ha be happening right now and I don't need this when it rains, it pours. When we get in that mode, because that's our first instinct, we've got to back up and say, okay, I need to remember who God is. I, if, if I asked you, Miss Rachel, grab your microphone there, Miss Rachel, and I told her to be ready for a question or two while we're talking and uh Tell me, tell me maybe some things you default to uh, about God. Like when you're going through a trial, what, what are some of the defaults? Is it that God is, uh, God is powerful, that God is sovereign? That, I mean, what is it in your mind that kind of triggers once you're done questioning, as we all do sometimes? Um, my default is usually I don't understand, but I know God has a bigger plan in this world. That's, that's where I tend to go to after, you know, after the why is trust um, yeah. because ultimately that's what it comes down to for me it's like i don't get it but i guess i'm, I'm i have no other choice but to trust yeah. i can trust or fight it and fighting never works what is it that comforts you about god um in that default not necessarily that's what he's going to do uh, you trust him to do but what is it about god do you do you lean on his love his power uh, what is it and maybe it's different in different trials it's i go back to his word um and the verse i always go back to is all things work together for good to them that love god so i know if i'm going through something even if i don't think it's fair or i don't understand it somehow in god god's grand plan i know it's going to work out for my good because i love him and i'm one of his children amen and I think that's where the, where the default has to be is where we go back to say, God, I'm, I'm your child. Um, you know, Job was telling him, you know, I, I'm righteous and I've done this. And I, he, he begins to defend himself with his friends. And, and God says, those are good things to do. Those are what you're supposed to be doing. One has nothing to do with the other sometimes. I think sometimes we think what I'm doing correlates exactly to what's happening to me. Um, I was doing something good, then good should happen to me. I was doing something bad, so something bad should happen to me. When something bad happens and I'm not doing something bad, what happens? When I'm doing something good and something bad happens, uh, what, is it, what is it that I default to? Is it, is it always questioning God? Is it, uh, as I get sometimes, I mope around a little bit? My wife kind of has to... Never. <laughs> Never. Um, I've been very sick since February of 07. Uh, after 13 years of being sick off and on, nearly almost every day of, of the last 13 years, uh, I get mopey, I get, I get down. And some of you have chronic illnesses and, and have to deal with those things. Uh, but our default, once we, once we go through that stage where we're, we're having that conversation with God and it's kind of a tug of war of what's going on here, why, why is this happening? Eventually, we've got to default to the place where God is love. God is wise. God is just, the Bible says. God is, God is merciful. God is grace. God is, uh, God is righteousness. And so we can trust, as Miss Rachel said, we can trust him because that's who he is. And uh, we don't necessarily want people to trust us for who we are because we are shifty. We are, uh, we could have a whole different thing. And that's why in the book of Job, 
uh, God says, I'm not going to let the hypocrites reign. And, and, and so there's always an end when somebody's trying to be something they're not. There's always an end to that. You can't keep that up forever. And so we just should be real with God. And God wants us to be real. And Job had to get real with God. And uh, because God was getting very real with Job. And then lastly, uh, and I'll, be, I'll say this quickly, in trials, our deliverer, so in trials, our desire will be to justify our question why. In our trials, our default needs to be reminding ourselves of who God is. And then lastly, in trials, our deliverer wants us to learn more about God. He wants us to learn about him. You know, the two things I've learned about God, God can command, but God can care. And listen, he might be commanding some things in our lives right now that we're not really sure why or how or what's going to happen or what the end of these things are. But our default needs to be, it's God. And God is, is wise and God is right and God is love and, and we can trust him. And we need to understand that our deliverer in this whole thing, one of the things we should come out the other side of this and we've talked about strong marriages and better parenting and, and stronger schools, stronger church. We've talked about those things. But we need to come out the other side of this trial in our life knowing more about God. And we need to step back and see how, how powerful God is. But we also need to see how personal God is. And he wants to get to know us very, very well during these days. And uh, I pray that that will be you. Miss Rachel, anything to add? Would you like to say goodbye to our church folks? Anybody you'd like to give a shout out to? A shout out. Give a shout out to we're, somebody. We're the first going back that, to the first person that comes to your mind. Give a shout out to first person that comes to my mind. Wendy Hyrak. I miss Hyrak. you. There you go. Wendy Hyrak. You got a <laughs> shout out for Miss Rachel. Uh, I was thinking about Ed Sarah just now. Uh, praying for your health, man. And uh, I think of our prime timers, Elaine and Eleanor, Yvonne, Miss Debbie Wingard, Irene. I shouldn't even start because I'm, I'm going to miss somebody. But I, I see you in the auditorium. Your, your spirits are here. It's weird. We need to put pictures of them yes pictures on on the seats i'll feel more comfortable <laughs> uh but church family i love you um please continue to be faithful i got the financial report the other day from pastor lear uh we need to step that step that up if we can uh please be faithful give online send it in drop it off uh we we are are we're staying above water right now uh but we need you to help us uh in that area pray for our our church family give faithfully. Remember these lessons. Our first desire will be to question, to justify. Our second default needs to be that we understand who God is and remind ourselves of who God is. And then lastly, make sure when the deliverer brings us out of this, we know more about God, about more of his commanding and more of his care, more of his love, more of his grace, and let God show you those things through these trials of life. God bless you, my friends. We'll talk to you soon. For me and Miss Rachel, We'll see you on Sunday for the cantata, 10.30, 10 o'clock children's time, children's story time, and then 10.30, we'll be right here in the auditorium. For the event. For the event. God bless.